Thank you again. So what we'll be talking about is not radial fractures in general. We talk about fractures that cannot uh, be fixed, mainly. So you're not going to chop a fracture that is perfectly repairable or doesn't need to have surgery. It's fractures that you will consider uh, fixing, replacing, or just throwing away the head, and whether is, this is a viable option. So we're talking about comminuted fractures uh, or fracture dislocation, fracture patterns that may be considered unstable. Uh, Mason was the one who started not only to give us a classification, but also talked about excising the head with good uh, results and a good outcome, uh, especially in patients that are really low demand. And there are lots of papers comparing ORIF uh, versus uh, replacement or ORIF uh, versus uh, excision. Uh, overall, if you have a complex injury pattern, there may be still no significant difference, but the thing is there's papers that are all underpowered, so there are very few patients that fall into each one of those categories. So they are all very low, so eight cases there. That's a very low number to be able to compare and say there is no significant difference, to be honest. Again, uh, in this paper, there's very, the two sides of the, of the comparison are not uh, very well uh, matched. And this continues across the literature where you get inconclusive results. Uh, so uh, in this study, they compare all three, but with 15 patients in each arm. Again, very low powered study, which says uh, the ORIF is not that good, whereas you may get exactly the opposite if you read another paper. Uh, overall, they suggest that uh, resection can be a good option if or if is not possible. But again, in that one, uh, replacement is not well part. So what are your considerations? What you need to think? The literature is not extremely helpful. You have uh, each one uh, presenting whatever results uh, they have in small studies. There's no big, massive review. What do you need to consider if you decide to take the radial head out? You need to be aware of those two concepts. It's uh, the writing on uh, stability of the elbow, and that is where you get the radial head as one of the big pillars in the lateral stability of the elbow. And the other is the forces that transferred across from the wrist to the elbow if you lose the interosseous membrane. And you see, if you resect the radial head, you get 100% of the forces going through the ulna, and if you resect the uh, radial head, the entire radius will move uh, proximally if the interosseous membrane is not uh, stable. And these associated injuries, ligament injuries, that may lead to a, a complex instability if you resect the radial head are not uncommon. So if you uh, look at studies with MRI scans, whether they're clinically significant or not, there is a very high prevalence of concomitant ligamentous injuries, up to 80% in patients that have a, a radial head fracture that we may call simple. So you should always consider the possibility of having a complex pattern, and this is something that needs to be tested and proven before you decide to throw away something that uh, creates stability. And uh, you may have LCL injuries in 11% of patients with the radial head fracture, which is quite a high number. It's one in 10, if you think about it. So in this paper, it's a very long-term study, and they have very good results after 15 years. But what we need to check in this is that there is no associated with elbow dislocation. So these are injuries that were stable when the radial head was excised. So if you are in that scenario, then you are safe to consider excising and throwing away the head but you need to be careful you have not fallen into a dislocation pattern or an instability pattern, so you, you have to consider the two main things. Are all the pillars intact and only the radial head is missing, and is the interosseous membrane intact? Then you might go ahead and excise the head with uh, papers indicating long, lo good long-term results. 
The other problem is that uh, if you delay the resection and if you delay the treatment, the outcome is worse. So it's the opposite of what we said in the biceps. In this scenario, you will have to decide quite fast. Are you going to replace, excise, do whatever you do? The longer you wait, the worse the outcome is. So it's not a condition that uh, gives you a lot of uh, leeward. You have to make a decision quite fast. What are you going to do and how are you going to manage this kind of, the injury that you have in front of you? The arthroscopic excision is only for chronic problems and not for an acute injury. There are two main issues. One is uh, that uh, there is a high instance of concomitant ligament injuries and may, you may not be able to see those because usually when you have an acute fracture, the capsule is not intact and there's a lot of hematoma. So you may miss part of the injury. Uh, it's more for uh, chronic problems where there's persistent arthritis or a malunion of a fracture that will help uh, uh, then regain the rotation that you've lost in the wrist. So this is the approach I would suggest. If you have an acutely commutated fracture, one that you know needs surgery, not one that can be treated conservatively, then if you have an injury that is considered stable, then you can do an open resection. But while you do the open resection, you need to uh, be careful of the approach you use. It's best if you use an anterior approach to protect the lateral ligaments, and at the same time, check the lateral collateral intraoperatively and check the elbow stability media the, of the medial collateral and the interosseous membrane. These have to be checked intraoperatively, and then you would be safe to do a resection. Otherwise, if you fall into the suspicion of a ligament injury, then you replace, if it's a commuted fracture and repair, if it's less than three fragments, you can do a stable orif and repair all the ligament injuries that you identify. So the whole concept, and if you're in doubt, I would say uh, it's best to replace than resect something because the load of the ulna will lead very fast to arthritis and then it becomes a very complex uh, issue to resolve. Or if you have an interosseous uh, membrane ligament, you will suspect that from the mechanism it's better if you replace because you will maintain the forearm stability by uh, uh, combining forces on both uh, bones. And with this, I'd like to thank you. That's another pretty place where I live now. Thank you.